Good morning, everyone. Let's warm up our voices a little bit this morning with You Are the Healing. Uh, it's number 522. And you can just sing with me right away if you remember it. <clears throat> Jesus, you are the healing. You come to make us whole again. Jesus, you are the healing. Come show us how to live. Jesus, you are the healing. Jesus, you are the healing. Jesus, you are the healing. Come show us how to live. Okay, so kindergartners, help us out and really sing out on that. Okay? And uh, I think we're good with everything else. This is our first grade level mass of the new year, so let's make it a good one. Good morning, and welcome to our Mass. Jesus loves us even when we are not feeling lovable. Jesus wants to draw close to us and touch our hearts, even when we have done something sinful. Just like the leper in today's Mass, we came can come to Jesus when we are in need. We can be sure that Jesus will hear us and answer our prayers. Our opening song is number 388, City of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Did you notice what's happening here on the altar? 
Maybe you can't see it from back there. The sun is shining on this altar of life. It's good to be here. God's pointing the, the holiness, the sacrifice that we're making. This is important. This is an important time. So that's why uh, we uh, acknowledge our sins and then prepare ourselves to celebrate these beautiful mysteries. Mm-hmm. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. One day the Israelites went out to fight the Philistines. One, the Philistines made a fierce attack. They defeated the Israelites and killed about 4,000 of them. The Israelite army returned to the camp and the leader said, why did the Lord let us lose to the Philistines today? Let us get the ark of the Lord. Then the Lord will help us rescue from our enemies. The army sent some soldiers to bring back the Ark of the Lord. As Eli's two sons brought the Ark of the Lord into camp, the army cheered so loudly that the ground shook. The Philistines heard the noise and said, What are those Hebrews shouting about? When the Philistines learned that the Ark of the Lord had been brought into the camp, they were scared to death and said, The gods have come into their camp. Now we are in real trouble. Nothing like this has ever happened to us before. Who can, save us? who can save us from these powerful gods? They're the same gods who made all those horrible things happen to the Egyptians in the desert. Philistines, be brave and fight hard. If you don't, those Hebrews will rule us just as we've been ruling them. Right, don't be afraid. The Philistines did. They killed 30,000 people all the way to their home. Eli's sons were killed, and the ark of the Lord was captured. The word of the Lord.
Hallelujah. Song leaders, please come up. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A man with leprosy came and kneeled down. He begged Jesus, You have the power to make me well, if only you wanted to. Jesus felt sorry for the man. So he put his hand on him and said, I want you. Now you are well. At once the man's leprosy disappeared, and he was well. After Jesus strictly warned the man, he sent him on his way. He said, Do not tell anyone about this. Just go and show the priest that you are well. Then take a gift to the temple as Moses commanded, and everyone will know that you have been healed. The man talked about it so much and told so many people that Jesus could no longer go openly into a town. He had to stay away from the towns, but people still came to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Happy New Year! Well, thank you. It's good to have you back. Isn't it good to be back in school? Yes. Oh, that's great! It's, it seems like a long time since we've been together. It's good to have you. Ho hopefully, I hope you had a good break. I hope that you had a good uh, break. But Christmas and New Year's, just spend time with family, enjoy family, laugh, rest. <gasps> hopefully, Mom and Dad let you sleep in a couple days. Late, you could sleep in. No, <laughs> I'm getting some no's, and I'm getting some yeses. Good. I remember as a little kid, we used to get to sleep in a little later during breaks. And then that we also had time to pray in this break. Pray with our families at Mass, at home, and then just pray privately to God. And now we're refreshed. Back to school. I love, that sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah, okay, back to school. Remember, way back, 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 when we started the school year, with the, what was it, the all-school mass? Whoops, there's Cindy. Okay, yeah. 
all school mats. Father Tom gave us the theme for the school year. Remember what the theme was? It's beautiful. It's perfect for this school year. All are welcome in this place. That's our theme. All are welcome in this place. We'll welcome everybody who's here, comes into the church, the parish, our schools, whoever they are, will be uh, kind of guests, hospitality. And we'll even uh, invite God into our lives. All are welcome in this place. All are welcome in our lives. Uh, we turn to uh, the St. Mark's Gospel. We're in the first chapter of St. Mark's Gospel. And right away in a gospel, like St. Mark's, he's inviting us in. We read the gospel, prayerfully read it. And, we're, and, and uh, the, the gospel writer, like St. Mark, is so beautiful in his writing. He draws us in. He's drawing us in to walk with Jesus. Uh, Jesus is, uh, we're walking with Jesus during his public ministry, his mission on earth. He has three years to do the mission the Father sent him to, and he does with great success. So right away, St. Mark, uh, we learn that Jesus has power, doesn't he? Yes. He has power to heal in word, and we'll hear that a lot of times in the gospel. Lord, you can save me. Heal me. I do. Be made clean. You are healed. And then by action. Today we hear the, the combination. Word and action. Jesus put his hand on the, the, the leprosy. And he healed the leper. It's beautiful. Jesus' uh, touch heals the leper. And he's, the, the, the leper is restored, full healing, body, mind, and spirit. And he's fully restored into his community, his town. With the disease, the leprosy, he was, he was uh, not anymore part of that community. Couldn't be. Now he is. Full healing. Oh, and this is always amazing. The, the result, and I, I probably do the same thing. Jesus said, don't, you know, just go to the, go to the temple. Tell them you're healed and do what you need to do, what, what Moses prescribed. And we hear the man just, he just had to tell everybody. He let everybody know about what happened to him, how Jesus heals and saves. I probably would have did the same thing. How can you not tell anybody? Jesus heals and saves. So Jesus loves all humanity and the gift of human life. We know this in the Gospels, in especially this one we just heard today, how Jesus loved the man who was uh, sick. Jesus respects and recognizes the dignity and integrity in each person, in you and I, in all humanity, past, present, and future. It's beautiful. Why? Why does he do this? Because Jesus knows that all of us, are created in the image and likeness of God. And so we have great dignity and integrity. Young, old, everybody in between. Does that mean uh, uh, when we have uh, questions like, is there great dignity and integrity even in people who are sick? Yes. Even people who are crippled for all their life? Is there great dignity and integrity in their lives? Yes. Even the handicapped? Yes. They have great dignity and integrity. Even the youngest and the oldest, young like you, you're very young. And old people like me. We all have great dignity and integrity in the eyes of God. And all humanity is holy. And it's a great gift that God has given us. So the church is always teaching us, based on the scriptures, because the scriptures, the, uh, uh, the gospel, is the gospel of life. It's not the gospel of death. It's the gospel of life. And the church always teaches uh, the sanctity and holiness and dignity of all human life. 
It helps humanity build up a culture of life. That's important to know. Even at a young age, we need to know this. I was trying to think of a modern-day example where Jesus is still touching people who are sick, touching them with love, giving them great dignity and integrity. I'll share, you a, uh, share a story, modern-day story of this happening. I want to talk about Michael. Now, we don't know Michael. I didn't know Michael until yesterday. Uh, a lakeside hospital called, the chaplain called, and the family of Michael asked for anointing of the sick for Michael. Michael is 64 years old, and he is dying. God will call him home soon. Michael, come home. Be with me in heaven. Michael is now in hospice care. It's a very special care uh, for the dying, those who are dying. So there's men and women in hospice care. They're beautiful, beautiful men and women who have a deep capacity to love. They're going to look after Michael uh, in these last few days of his life. They're going to make sure he's comfortable. They're going to take care of his needs, whatever that is, until he dies. They're helping him to die with dignity and integrity and a holy death. And it's going to happen. In the uh, sacrament of the anointing of the sick, it's always Jesus, God, touching through the priest, like anointing of the sick, touching the person. The very hand of God in a sacrament, like the anointing of the sick. Now you see, Michael has needed special care all his life. Uh, he has been uh, confined to a bed for many, many years. I don't think he ever talked. I don't think he could communicate at all. I walked into the, the hospital room of Michael, and I saw a broken body in the hospital bed. And I looked upon a holy man. This is a holy man, Michael. The years of pain and suffering showed on his broken body. Physically, you could see it. There was no denying it. The world would respond to Michael's life as, what a waste. What a waste of life. And then put Michael in a room not to be seen or recognized. That's, the, that's just the, the world's mentality. But the church, the Catholic church and uh, Catholics, baptized Christians, we uphold the dignity in life of life. Every life, young and old. Michael's beautiful life. So we had a beautiful prayer. Uh, Michael's, uh, one of Michael's uh, family members were there, Patty, and we anointed Michael. And we prayed, had some beautiful prayers. We prayed that God, Mary, St. Joseph, and all the saints would be close to Michael uh, as, uh, right up to his death. It was a beautiful prayer. And I felt privileged to be there. Um, in the future, when we, when we go to visit sick people or people who are dying, always remember that's a, 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 an incredible privilege to be in the presence of something that beautiful, a person dying. It's very personal between the person dying and God. And for us to be in that presence, that's a privilege. That's a holy time. That whole time is saturated with God's loving presence. So with all this in mind, someday we will see Michael. Again, we don't know, we, we've never met Michael. And like I said, I didn't know who Michael was until yesterday. But we're all going to meet Michael in heaven someday. And he's going to look so beautiful. No more broken body, no more pain, just glorious holiness. A beautiful saint. That's the dignity of life. Because we know right now, even in our brokenness, we're going to be saints like Michael and beautiful in heaven. So, we began this second semester 
with that beautiful school, uh, school theme that Father Tom gave us, all are welcome in this place, this parish, this, this school, the church in our lives. All those who might be sick, people in need, handicapped, those who are, are rejected, will always be welcomed in our, in our hearts. And there will be that those people, all the people, all our brothers and sisters, all life, that we're going to love them. Because we understand now, through this gospel, how Jesus, uh, the beauty that Jesus shows us in the dignity of every human life. It's going to be a great, great school year this second semester. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Together we stand, aware of God's quiet presence at work in our lives. We place all our needs and prayers before him this morning. For Pope Francis and all of our church leaders that they will fulfill their calling to celebrate and serve the gospel of life. We pray to the Lord. We pray that in this parish community, we will show our love, hope, and joy through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. for an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life in our parish and city, we pray to the Lord. For all who are gathered here today, that God will deepen our relationship with Christ through the scriptures and the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. For all who care for the sick, especially the frontline workers, may God strengthen and guide them. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are infected with the coronavirus, may they soon return to good health. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Roger Gigsby, who remembered at this Mass, and for all the needs we hold in our heart, we pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for the gift of life from the moment of conception to natural death for you and I and Michael. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Father, we praise you for, your, for loving us so much and desiring to help and heal us. We offer these prayers to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our preparation song is number 522. You are the healing. 522. <laughs>
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you. We pray that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in loving mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. So, may our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your dead and and profess your dead and until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Well, thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. I'm sorry, what? Uh, anyone? That'll be fine. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Our communion song is number 326, I Am the Bread of Life, 326.
Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. We'll have three beautiful blessings to start this second semester. We're asking that God give us a spirit of welcome. Like Father Tom said, all are welcome in, in this place. And a spirit of hospitality. Just welcoming and recognizing the dignity in every person we meet. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his loving mercy. May he turn his countenance toward you and give you his eternal peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever and ever. Go and announce the living gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. We will sing number 612, Give Thanks to the Lord. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 10. Number 612. 